Hey guys, uh, we're in Kentucky today, hanging out with Dylan. How's your weekend going, man? It's going good. Better now. Yeah, barbecue and motorcycle, right? Yeah. It's going to be a good weekend. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a first for our Spotlight series. We're doing a street glide. company like commercial stuff but uh I mean I was I'm a vet and stuff and you know I got out and I'm living in Kentucky now. So I gotcha. how'd you get in the motorcycle? My grandpa he uh grew up he had a shop it was in my whole family like all my uncles and stuff were in the motorcycles so I was around it quite a quite a bit when I was growing up and then uh, so I've always had like an interest in it and I always like kind of wondered about um you know what they were into and the motorcycle scene mm -hmm. and like the culture and stuff. And so once I got in a position, once I got out of service and stuff, I took it on. Like I didn't start riding motorcycles since I was 29 years old. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same boat. Like I know, I feel like the majority of people you meet started when they were little kids, their parents got like a dirt bike or something like that. I was no. Same, I wasn't able to get a, get a motorcycle because I was able to afford it, afford it as an adult. So I got to yeah. start as well. So cool. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I wasn't in the dirt bikes or nothing. Like, I was 29 years old. My first bike was a night train okay, and I yeah. dropped it. I was living in Texas in Tyler, where your brother's at. Yeah. And I actually dropped it in the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> like I couldn't even get out of the driveway. No, and mean, so I did a course that following weekend okay. and then I learned how to ride a motorcycle. And like, that was in 2016. Okay. So, and then, you know, I've you, had three motorcycles this my third time. You've racked up miles since then. So there's pictures of you on your Instagram and Sturgis and everywhere too, right? So you logged some miles as well, right? Yeah, I try to put on a lot of miles. I mean, I, I honestly, I enjoy it. And it's something that I took on that I can see myself doing for a long time. Okay. So, I mean, I, this is a 2020, I got 25,000 on. I mean, that's nothing to really brag about, but it, you know, I'm putting I mean, at least 12 on a year. I mean, so. that's what, depending on when you got it, 2020, two years at the most. So, I mean, that's twenty five thousand dollars, twenty five thousand miles in two years is definitely above average. So yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I mean, I try to do as many trips as I can. I try to plan out my year trip wise and cool. try to check the boxes. Yeah. All right. So we'll talk about your your build here. I guess we're, before we get into this bike, obviously it's the first street glide I've done. You don't see many street glides like built like the whole performance thing. I can think of yours, the Tarpon Turbo guys, and maybe a couple other ones on Instagram that actually done like a performance build with their street glide. So. Um, what made you pick a street glide over the road bike? You just prefer like well, looks, or do you like the the ferry mount on the porch, or just... I don't know. I think so. I was on a night train originally, mm -hmm. and I know I wanted something I could go farther on. Mm -hmm. And that being my size, I don't know. I feel like the road glide is like a bigger bike or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's something weird. But all my relatives, they all ride street glides. Like mm -hmm. nobody rides road glide. Okay. Like all my uncles ride street glides. So it's kind of like. I don't know. I kind of just went with the street glide. Okay. And I haven't regretted it yeah. because, I mean, there's so many road glides that I think it's kind of a niche thing being yeah. a street glide dude. So yeah, I kind of stuck with it. Yeah. I'm stuck with the white. So in the performance scene, <laughs> I feel like you don't see nearly as many street glides as you do road glides, but not really yeah. great. So for this bike, in terms of when you decided to start building, kind of what were you going for, both aesthetically in terms of how you wanted to look, but also like purpose kind of deal? Well, um, I had an 11 and it was a white street glide mm -hmm. as well as so that one there. But okay. um, so when I had that 11, I had apes on it and the freaking mm -hmm. dual exhaust and everything. But 
as soon as I got that 11, I was riding it like I should be on a sport bike. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like instantly, that's what I was into. Okay. And I had no idea, like, about the performance scene or nothing. Like, mm-hmm. the whole performance scene, like, actually came on. It was, you know, a blessing. Yeah. You know, and it was like, oh, this is actually what I would like. Okay. You know, yeah. so I kind of just dove into it. Um, I mean, I've been, you know, guiding along the way with my friends and stuff like yeah. that. The barkeep back there. Um, he was he was actually he was starting to do some stuff with his bike like performance based with his road glide yep. and you know I was like damn you know like I that's how I ride my bike I might as well just start pushing that way and it, the scene was just getting hot so um, I kind of just try to do as much as I can and make it the way you know how I ride so yeah hundred percent yeah um, and then we'll talk about let's jump into the paint and how well you got black and white and it's like. Uh, it's nothing crazy over the top here, but it's it's super striking with like the design. So, um, was this kind of your idea, or did you get the painter on this? How did that process work? Um, I used the painter in town uh, right here where I live. His name is Casey Elkins, Crossover Customs. Okay. Um, he's got his hands in like many different things, mm-hmm. like in the motorcycle scene, like not even just Harley's, but like across the board. Okay. Um, and he doesn't put a whole lot out there, so he's. Um, he does a lot without people knowing, but he, I, I approached him, like I found out that he lived here in my town mm-hmm. and I hit him up and I was like, hey, I didn't know you lived in Lancaster. So me and him linked up and we started talking about it. Um, and so I actually started putting some uh, pencil to paper okay. and started drawing some designs because I like to mock up things before I jump That's fair. and do it. Yeah, so 100%. I know I think I did like, you know, eight different drawings and I took it to him, the, the one I was thinking I was gonna go with. Mm-hmm. And me and him collaborated with it, and uh, he liked what I was putting down, like as far as the idea. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of a strike based kind of guy anyway, okay. so it was kind of planned to what he likes. Nice. So it actually really worked out. So. Okay. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, we're going to get some pictures later. We've got the white and black, and then you've got like some of the black is flat, and you bring in. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, he was. he's a fan of the matte stuff, and uh, he kind of sold that to me, like just trying to make some colors pop like break up the colors a little bit with some matte black so yeah. i was like you know what that sounds like a good idea and there's not a whole lot of people doing the matte things so. yeah i feel like that got i feel like right after chrome kind of went away all the matte stuff got really hot and it kind of went away but i like the combo of the gloss and the matte it makes it hot so yeah all right you've got a in addition to paint you also got a couple of carbon pieces as well correct so i see both your fenders and your dash anything else uh, no, that's it. So the idea was, I mean, my idea was just kind of like, just do like a, a carbon down the middle kind of deal. Okay, yeah. So just the fender, just the dash, just the rear fender, which there's a lot more you could do as far as carbon goes, but yeah. I was just thinking like just the stripe down the middle. Okay. And then just the you know, caveat on the whole paint thing was um, once, once I got the carbon on and I was standing behind the bike, the bags were white and I didn't have no paint job. And I was thinking... I don't know, it just looked, it looked funny to me because yeah. it's just like white, black, white. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, this this is not gonna work. So when I was doing the paint scheme, I was thinking from standing behind the bike, I want the bike to look like it's black. Yeah. And then when you come around the side, you'll see that it's not, you okay. know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's large, yeah. blotches of color is yeah. my, thing, my thought, so. And I guess, is this, is this a carbon pattern in the seat to kind of go with uh, the carbon, so that is? Yes. Okay. So that's a you know saddle and seat, the Krauss one, um, the same one that the boy, the barkeep runs. <laughs> um, hey, you got you want to know a funny story? You're gonna love this. That seat is going away. I'm selling it. Excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for him to say I change seats a lot because I do. Um, okay. I don't like this. So seat. what number seat is this? Huh? What's, what number seat is this? Then? Um, maybe three. I don't maybe know. Maybe three. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I know what you're going with next. Yeah, I'm going back to Paris. Okay. Okay. So I had a kick flip before, mm-hmm. it was diamond stitch, just like the basic, mm-hmm. whatever. But um, I bought this from Tucker Speed, and I feel like I'm sitting on a bar stool. Okay. Like going from La Pera to Saddleman, like nothing wrong with Saddleman. Did like, you have the gel in your La Pera? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, well, I just you can get away with without gel. I know a lot of times the gel seats are a little harder. And you're supposed to get to break them in or whatever. Whatever the standard um, is. And sometimes you can get them without, so they're a little softer. But people argue whether or not like gel is better for long distance. I don't know. Like, Tell where I rode that seat to. What? Sturgis. Yeah. What? You rode that seat to Sturgis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I rode that seat from Daytona to um, 
wherever they were put, where were they putting that thing on that? Space Coast. Space Coast yeah. So Space Coast, and it was only like, you know, an hour and a half ride, and I was like, I could not ride very far in the seat at all. I feel like I'm sitting on a bar, bar stool or something. Okay. Like That's I was great. getting hot spots pretty quick. Okay. So with the LaPera seat, I rode many miles on that thing, mm -hmm. kick flip. Yeah. And I'm going back to that. I actually got a custom one that just got shipped today. I didn't tell you because you were like, you would be like, you change seats more than I change socks. <laughs> Maybe. It happens. Maybe. So you're, you're having a little pair now. Yeah, I am. Like I had a kickflip before, but like I said, it was a basic one. And I'm switching back. So I got okay. a custom one coming. It's got, so the band will have carbon fiber. Yeah, yeah. And it's got the grip tape nice. everywhere else pretty much. So. Nice, man. Cool. So I think that'll play with the mat. But. Very nice. Um, hey guys, I want to take a quick break from the interview to talk about one of our sponsors today, Thundermax. Had the chance to work with these guys the last year or two, have nothing but great things to say about them and their parts. Today, specifically, I want to talk about their performance ECM tuner. We don't mention this very often, mainly because it's hidden under the seat, but if you're building a performance Harley motor, this is the way to go. The Thundermax tuners are a super easy install, just directly replaces your factory ECM. There's no wire cutting, it just plugs directly in. So when you do that first upgrade that most of us do for our Harley, which is an exhaust and an air cleaner, you don't have to go to a dealer and pay for a tune or a license for a tuner. Just buy one of these, install it with your pipe, upload a base map and go for a ride. It'll do all the work for you. It has two wideband O2 sensors. They're gonna constantly detect your air fuel ratio. So it does everything. Big thing I like about these, six months to a year down the road, if you're like most of us, you're going to do another upgrade, whether that's a cam chest kit or whatever motor work you wanna do. This is still good. It works for the life of your bike. Upload a new base map, go for a ride. These things are fully adjustable. You can still take it to somebody to do a professional tune if you want. If you're interested in one of their tuners, I'm gonna drop their website link as well as all their socials in the description below so you can check them out. I'd also highly recommend their YouTube channel. They've got installs, they talk about base map selection and upload, all that kind of deal. If you're looking for a performance upgrade for your motor, this is the way to go. I guess we'll jump into some of your more like detailed like, parts and everything. So let's jump into your motor first. So you obviously got the M8 being 2020. So what all have you done motor wise? The only thing I've done uh -huh. is a cam. Is a cam? And I, I don't plan to do anything else. You remember what cam you went with? Uh, 475 SNS. 475. You like yeah. that? Pretty so far. Yeah, I mean it's a solid. It's a solid you know build. Um, and it puts puts good power. I mean HPI did it for me. Jimmy tuned it. Okay. And so like you get your money's worth up there at HPI, yeah. so he mm -hmm. can get every ounce out of it with that 475. Okay. Um, and this became a solid build, and as much as I ride in like a tour, like a, once you cross a, once you cross a bridge with motor builds, like you're inducing problems, I would say. Yeah. I see it a lot. You put more stress on stuff. I so, yeah. I mean. Give yourself those numbers, Dylan. Huh? Give yeah. yourself those numbers. Yeah. 170, 117 over 130 torque. I so, yeah, that's. Kind of what I'm looking for a mobile. Uh, I want something that you want something that's good. You get plenty of power out, but not something you're getting to a level you have to worry about. Yeah. And I thought you there are a bunch of inmates pushing like crazy numbers, but I do feel like you do hear about like issues with them every once in a while. So um, yeah. And if you're doing a lot of trips and touring stuff, you don't want to have to even that in the back of your mind is kind of loosened. Yeah. So, yeah. So I just try to keep it uh, stupid simple, and I don't want to do too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just keep it reliable because yeah. I don't want to be stranded. So there you go. <laughs> and you got the Trask air cleaner and the D and D exhaust to go with that. Yeah. So I've had the Trask for a long time. That was one of my first upgrades. Okay. Um, I have, I've had no problems out of it. I mean, it looks good aesthetically, mm -hmm. and I'm you know I plan on keeping it. Um, mm -hmm. The D and D exhaust has been it's been awesome. I was one of the I grabbed that up when they first came out of came out with it. Okay. And uh, I've been running it. It sounds good. I get a lot of confidence on the sound. So yeah, you will I feel like you don't you see D&D, &D, but I feel like you obviously don't see as many as you do of like Masani's or HPI's or whatever else. But all the ones I've heard sound really good. Yours and the guy in Nashville has a lower rider S that has one that sounds really nice. So yeah. Nice. Cool man. Um I guess you nothing clutch wise or anything like that. No. Uh what are you doing suspension wise? Rear and front. So uh I got legends front and rear. Okay. So I got the Axios up front. Um you know, the plus two. Yeah. And I got 13s in the rear. So I mean, it's a little. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a little, I'm a shorter guy. So yeah. I'm trying to keep the 13s high. in the back and it's got a kind of a weird, kind of a, you know, weird stance. But 
Uh, I think it works. I think it looks good. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it gets you a little more ground clearance if you're pushing hard and riding it more yeah. like sport bike, which is you're not as tall, it still works. Cool. Yeah. Um, you're pretty happy with like the legend in the front and everything. Yeah, everything. I mean, every, I mean, I think they make good products. I mean, they've, yeah. been, they've been around for a long time. And I mean, if you're on a budget, yeah, it works. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, when we were when I, was, when I had her her done and we started, I started building that initially. I would put it front and rear, and it was it's super nice. The only reason I'm trying something else on my bagger is just solely to try something else. I was super happy with it, and like that, especially for what you what you're paying for. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's budget friendly, and they you know accomplishes everything I needed to accomplish. Um, I don't know. I have a hard time like spending a ton of money. Yeah. On this thing is you know as much as I ride it and thrash it like yeah. and I'm gonna I know I'm gonna go through the bike yeah like pretty quickly I would say so you wanna be so so I want to keep it budget friendly and also like if you know something happens like I'm not like shoot this sucks because I spent so much money yeah you don't you don't really get back on motorcycles yeah unless you try some rival shit or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> waffles waffles waffles, waffles. All right, let's talk about your uh, your riser handlebar, that whole setup. Um, so you got some cross risers going here? Yeah. What, um, so they're 10 inch risers. Okay. And then I got the fly moto bars. Okay. When I collar matched them, that was something I did early on. Yeah. Um, I don't even know how I came up with that idea. Did you give me that idea? Yeah, you copycatted me, motherfucker. You don't have collar matched bars. I told you it was a good idea. And then you did it after I said it was a good idea. Okay, yeah, I had still on still on sports. Oh, man, guys, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is ridiculous. No, so, yeah, so oh, I call him. He's gonna say it was his, his idea, idea no, but it's really not was. all his idea. No, it was his idea. That's right. It looks good. And you affirmed it, so yeah, I could bounce some ideas off, you know, just to make sure. But yeah, um, yeah, so I did the color match bars, um, with the white originally before the paint job. Mm -hmm. It good. I got a lot of confidence on that. Yeah. Uh, I see it. I remember mean, some people doing it now, but um, yeah. Cool. Uh -huh. And you got some Galfer rotors? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to swap out the stock, the stock stuff and put something different on there. And, uh, I'm, I'm not 100% happy with the braking. I think, I mean, that, that's one of the things on my list is probably just upgrade my braking some more. Some like radio mounted brakes? And yeah, so I want to upgrade those uh, just to get some more braking power, but yeah, right, right now, I mean, it's working for me, so. Just like right. Where's your gun range? Oh, okay, I was wondering, I was like, some people excited. Yeah, there's a gun range right up there. Okay, right. And then you've got all your controls or SPC? Right? Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, I went with them. Those guys, those guys are solid dudes over there. Yeah, I'm going to talk to them quite a bit. Yeah, I met Toby and um, Rob wow, at House of Harvard like, last year. Super nice guys or whatever. So, yeah. yeah. They got some pretty badass bikes. Yeah, him and Robert are awesome. Yeah. Um, and the Santoro Fabrics crash, crash more. Yeah, yeah, I threw that on there. I mean, I like the look of that. And, yeah. Uh, it's functional. I haven't had to use it. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you never have to use it. and surges. I've played with the idea of doing the bag guards too, but I'm like, aesthetically, I don't necessarily like them. Yeah. But it's going to be one of those things. Like, I wish I had them when it does happen. Yeah. I've seen. So, I've seen some of the work, like <laughs> the ones that like stay here. They're pretty simple and clean. I kind of like those. Some of them do be a little out of hand, kind of destroy the whole like, string line of the bike. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Man, what else? What else you got on here? I think we covered. Cool. Um, you got? We got any other future plans besides the brakes, or are you still going to keep it as budget as possible since you're racking up the mile? Um, no, I was going to do the brakes, and I was thinking, you know, I was going to do the swing arm eventually, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And playing with that idea, and I've been playing with the idea of maybe switching the exhaust, but I'm back and forth. I'm very teeter totter when it comes to decisions. Okay. Let's talk about your light trip. You have obviously the Baja is right up front, and yeah, where are you running back here? The uh, Kuriakin Auto Lights. Okay. Kellerman or whatever they're called. I got you. So that's something I did this winter, um, and it was challenging. Yeah. I mean, for me, because I'm not like super mechanical. Yeah. I get but that. I like that's to good. I like to tackle stuff like DIY kind of stuff. Yeah. Do it yourself kind of deal. Um, obviously, you save money. Yeah. 
But you also learn in the yeah. in why you do it's it. Fun. Things like that that you actually don't like. Yeah. You feel comfortable enough to get into and you're not going to completely fuck I just, well, yeah. I'm the kind of person that instead of spending it, I'm just going to do it myself. Like yeah. if, if it's if it ends up kind of wonky, mm -hmm. it's wonky. But yeah. I learned, you know, as I did it, you know what I'm saying? I can do it better next. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing I did uh, this winter. You know, I did that carbon fiber fender. Yeah. And I blasted holes in it. And then he showed up and fucked me up. And I blasted a hole that I didn't need. So if you look closely at my rear fender, Maybe buy you, new one. you will see that there's like some grommets in there plugging some holes because as I was measuring, he pulls up and I mark the wrong and then I blast the uh, hole through it. So there's like, so when I yeah. actually I put the lights in and I stood behind the bike and I was like, holy shit. Like the lights were like this. Yeah. <laughs> like crooked <laughs> as shit. I'm like, as soon as, you know, I was thinking that I was going to blame him, but I didn't want to you know, hurt his feelings. Because as I was measuring, he pulled up and I was like, he was acting stupid. And, you know, <laughs> I pulled the wrong measurement and I blasted the hole because he was distracting me. And then later on, I had to grind it. But Isn't there's there something about measuring twice or something. Measure twice saves your life. <laughs> this is my own. You're distracting, dude. Yeah, your fucking sweater is distracting. It is. It's nice. It's, nice it's from Texas. It's a nice sweater. The thing is trash. It's actually a gentleman's cloth. Gentleman's cloth. Yeah, and it wicks the sweat. I actually, I like. I like. I might wear it more. Yeah, I got it for this interview specifically. Looks good, dude. But I looks think it. Good. I think it looks good. What's my wife got to say? It? Dylan, real quick, tell the camera. Good? Tell them. Ben, tell Ben about our style. Sexy, In I'm Kentucky, talking. we have style. Style and grace. I, I, can, I think I can honestly say I don't think there's ever been this much style in one of my interviews. My yeah, there's not, there's not this much drip in the rest of the country. The rest of the country? <laughs> I said drip. <laughs> <laughs> I never get to use that word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, so, sorry. Get an LP6 in there. Do you have to buy like a different mounting bracket system or do you go to work that make that work with like stock stuff? So uh, I think Big Bear was one of the first ones doing it. Okay. And he had brought it up to me um, that they were doing a road guide road wide kit. And uh, I think they not too long after that they said that that same harness would work for the street glide. So okay. end up buying that like shortly after he did. Like he's my guinea pig, so a lot of yeah. times he'll spend the money yeah. and try shit out, and I can watch from the shadows. And if it works, it works. And if he doesn't want it, then I buy it from him for half off. There you go. That's my deal. He's so like, awesome. so like the Krauss um, actual adjusters down there, the uh -huh. vectors. Yeah. Those were his. I bought them from from him for half off. That's what I like to do. Keep it in budget, right? Keep it in the budget. So he buys it, and then I buy it for cheaper. That's the goal. That sounds like a plan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if anybody wants to reach out to you by questioning your bike or just anything in general, what's the best way to do that? Um, my handle on Instagram is Whitey Just Whitey. So that's where they can reach me. I don't have any Facebook or nothing like that. That's the only thing I got. So cool. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Next time. Next time. You want? Do you? So you can see. Oh, so I got a little snack. Oh fuck yeah! Do we get ham sandwiches? Yeah. This is always how we do it. I like this. I always got them. I always got them. <laughs> fuck yeah! I brought this. He ate when he was in Florida at the beach. It was stay on. I love it. <laughs> Chow down. No, you cheers it. Take a bite and cheers that. Yeah. <laughs> Most of all. So is that a built-in refrigerator? Right there? I'm, I'm joking, dude. Is there a built-in refrigerator with that? No. He a chug here, man. I keep them stale. Keep them stale. Yeah, oh, they, I was just sitting in there a couple days. Yeah, a couple days. They stay loose leaf in there. <laughs> I did not want this at all. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. No, I'm going to eat it because you don't waste good hand. <laughs> but if it was turkey, fuck that shit. She right? shushed me. I tried to stab the plate and it was loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Popping the drinks over there? Yeah, come on, boys. Here we go. Nice. I ain't standing here because I look good. about a whole beer. I'm not standing here because I look so good. I'm sorry I'm not paying for you. You're fine. You could have half mine. 
I like my hair. Yeah, you know, you know. Let me split the sandwich. He's gonna <laughs> shit out of the business. <laughs> he loves it. We got barbecue for real though. Just keep in mind, if you eat this now, you gotta eat barbecue later. <laughs> Been oh, I good. I like it. <laughs> dude, dude, I swear to God, no joke. The one he gave me in Florida was 10 times more than stuff. I guess it's hot though. Because uh, it got out, I was like, this is fucking gross. Because I just gave him shit. Like, yeah. you had challenges. And so he literally brought one over to the hotel. And then we were talking about this interview and all this dumb shit over the hotel. And, uh, <laughs> Tell me about the ham sandwich and I was like, fuck yeah, dude. And I kind of forgot to eat the bad boys out, so. Too many people hit me up about the ham sandwich. It was great. So he just start camera and shit. I loved it. He just like starts selling them, like $2 a pop. Just pull it out of there and here you go. <laughs> I was actually considering that. These are really uncomfortable <laughs> shit. What? And the shoes. Well, I was talking about my chair. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 chair. Right? So old man shoes are actually uncomfortable? They really are. I don't like these at all. You think it's because you didn't tie them? You don't have grass on them. There's not enough grass on them yet. Yeah. You gotta break it in like the gel. Yes. <laughs> I'm not gonna ever unlace these. These are gonna have their lace forever. No, I've heard a really good thing about the pair, and I've got to see other seats for that. So I'm pretty excited about it. See how it works. Yeah, I like it. So, I didn't even know that. You don't like that seat? No. No shit. That's why I run the surges. And it's, I've seen you squirming, dude, the whole fucking day. I squirm all the time, though. That was so awesome. I had a, I had a factory seat and I had a Lucky Dave's. Mm -hmm. I liked it pretty well. Then I bought that. I got a, uh, what's it, the um, Salomon sofa? Yeah, the, uh, are you the road sofa? Road sofa, yeah. I'm not renting it yet, but. You haven't rented that seat once? No. My ass always hurts, no matter what I rent. I got like, my. I don't have any meat on my ass bones. Um, I'm just a fat, skinny frame with a fat belly. Little 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 Dude, you wanna buy it? Help me out on this. You're loving it, man, I can tell. <laughs> Dude, I've had like, I had like a bagel this morning. And Yo, you're legit. Oh, so you're legit loving my, my saddle back hand. <laughs> saddle back hand. Loose leaf. That's what I call Dude. it. Loose leaf hand. Loose leaf hand. <laughs> Hey, you know what I do with mine? I don't want to eat them. <laughs> no, I'm about to, wait, are you just filming? <laughs> All right, no. You can cut this out. Hang on. I just put it under there for weeks. Should we like, talk or just keep walking? I'll just put it in my hat while you guys are talking. Let's do that. All right. Because you're going to see this because you're going to review it. But yeah. You just talk. I'm going to put this in my hat and I'm going to have it not say a word. <laughs> just stand here and listen. Because I really am done with this motherfucker. But as long as it's not dusting in my hair, I'm good. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait till I pan up and then just casually like. Oh, right, you guys just talk. You gonna count down or something? Yeah. So you doing barbecue tonight? What's for dinner? Huh? Yeah. What is for dinner? Um, put some meat on the grill. I got fuck I'm, I ate my sandwich. How's you guys? You said how's you got it? Well, I ate mine pretty fast. <laughs> what? That's so stupid. How's you guys? That <laughs> joke. <laughs> I had <laughs> jokes in my hat. <laughs> I swear to God. This isn't how we always are. I mean, we are a lot more than we should be, but it's not always this stupid. <laughs> he didn't want to do it. He was too shy. He says, you have to come over. So I said, well, if we do it, we're going to make fun. Tell you were good, man. Like, everybody sounds fine. Everybody thinks they're going to sound horrible. Like, everybody sounds fine. Uh, so, but yeah. But I won't put this in there. But, so I did a little work with Lucky Days before. And so their newer seats were just sound seats. I don't know seats. Or not as good as I had an older seat on the bike. How old? Like, how old? Like, I don't know. Like, I bought it like. When, that, I, when I bought it, so 2008, 17, 18? Yeah. Remember I bought the lower ass. Hey, and that I'm, seat was great. I'm I'm sorry from 18. I went to Montana. I only said, like, car on back and some other stuff. And so, anyway, when I started doing some Yeah, they can come in here. They made, made me a custom seat. Can you get that meat? I drove it for your mom's back there. She's that red trailer for her counter? Yeah, supposedly it's the same seat and everything because they only got, like, the field. Yeah, so mine's. It sucked. So mine's like a 17. No. Well, Mike's a 17, so it's probably a. Late seven year. No, it's eighteen. Eighteen. Definitely eighteen. So I don't know if that's the new ones or the old ones. Yeah. Oh. But it, it it's not bad. It's just it's a tall seat. And then when I lifted my bike, 
because you know right. I got plus two front and all that. Out there. I was like, man, I'm kind of touching. So I uh, put the cross seat on it, and I like it. Like I think it's my bony ass, dude, where it's got that little track in the middle. So no, I don't no, know. This seat sucks. Dude. I love it. I mean, that's what I rode to Sturgis. This sucks. And I got like five seats hey, hanging up. Sucks. Did you stop this. The Paris seat is way better. Than you. Yeah, I'm seeing. I feel like it made a pretty big difference. I was kind of always like, yeah, they're cool, but they're really worth like the money. And I feel like it really like solidifies the back end as well. A lot more like, comes a little more stable and everything. I don't know if that kind of explains that very well. But uh, they're pricey, but they're nice. Yeah. What are you doing? He's like limboing back there. <laughs> hey, what's that thing called? <laughs> what did you do? Ben. A bit backward? I thought you were going to fall over. I was like, there's no way. So I had to hold on to the counter. And I've been all the way until I was out of view. Like straight back like this. <laughs> and I hurt the shit on my legs. Like this. <laughs> and I went like this. And I straight back up. And then I started laughing. Sorry. Hey, Ben, what's that thing called um, that's got the design on it? Hey. Do you want to ask about that? Or do you guys yeah, already talk right. about it? This is serious. Everybody knows about these. No talk. Okay, well, I didn't Don't know if... There's nothing to say. Okay. Okay. Don't forget to stay like facing your chest this way, both of you. Remember, you're, you're trying to make people jealous of that sweater. Yeah, no, the titties. Yeah, flex those titties. You got tits at this point.